Hello, and welcome back to R. Lester Woodcraft. This time I'm going to show you how I made this over-engineered but very fine looking wine cabinet. Come along with me on this adventure. Hmm, that's mediocre. You can uh, roll the intro now. got my hands on some three-quarter inch oak plywood. Yes, three-quarter inch. We'll get back to why that's a problem. I break it down into the sides uh, and the top and the bottom pieces that I need, and I cut down some um, solid stock for edge banding on the edges of the plywood. But essentially the plan for this is to be a box that sits inside the cabinet with a pretty edge. That's pretty much all there is to it. Put some dowel holes in to the edge banding pieces, uh, match the dowel holes up to the edge of the plywood, and then um, just glue all the pieces together, clamp them up. Here we start to see the idea actually come together. Uh, you can see that the sides hang over the bottom about a quarter inch, and that's on purpose. I really needed half-inch plywood for this. I didn't get half-inch plywood. Uh, if I had created a box out of the three-quarter and slid it right into this opening of the cabinet, the door of the wine cooler wouldn't have actually been able to open. So I improvised by using half-inch edge banding. Um, you can see the lip there and letting the inside panels hang past because there's enough space behind the face of the cabinet to allow for that. So I created this overcomplicated contraption that gets assembled inside the cabinet and then slides forward to sit flush with the cabinet face and it sort of holds everything together and looks pretty. This top piece fits just too tight. It's not actually fully fitting. So all I need to do is uh, the front edge fits, but it won't move any further than that. So I think what I need to do is I'm going to put a relief cut in the top, and then I'm going to put also a dado here for some lights. The test fit allowed me to measure the actual inner uh, width of the cabinet insert, so I'm able to start cutting the pieces down for the drawer tray that's going to hold the red wine above the cooler. I didn't have any quarter inch oak left, so I used some quarter-inch walnut that I had left over from another project. Pity me. Ask me why I listen to 90s country when I'm working in the shop. Might be an interesting story, and maybe I'll hit that on a future video. Here's a 
fun fact I bet you didn't know. Laser printers work by fusing magnetically charged toner, little black powder stuff, to the paper by applying significant heat to it. That's how the toner sticks to the paper. Other fun fact, if you apply heat back to a laser printout, the toner will release. So if you do that against a piece of wood, for instance, the toner is going to fuse back to the wood. That's how I transferred this lettering onto the wood before I started tracing it with the wood burner. Also, wood burning is an incredibly cheap hobby to get into and incredibly therapeutic. So uh, I highly recommend it. Here I'm just gonna put the bottom in for the back of the drawer. This is just gonna be a tray that holds bottle openers and wine cork openers and, you know, wine o whatever you call them. I don't know anymore. Words. Time for the lights. I had this leftover LED strip tape stuff. Dug out the soldering iron and a spare 12 volt power supply. And uh, essentially, we're just gonna wire the lights to a contact switch to the power supply and uh, it's going to have a little plunder piece that makes it open and close when the cabinet door opens. This contact switch was a salvage from some trash alarm clock I dug out of the dumpster and it needed a little bit of cleaning on the contacts. Jeez. I've created a refrigerator light. How exciting. Gonna lie, this is the second try at this cut. And cue the huge sigh of relief. We gotta hold the glass in the door somehow, so I dug out the last bit of oak that I had and started whipping up a frame with a reverse rabbit to stick inside the door and hold the glass in. I'm just gonna hold it in with brad nails so that uh, I can remove it if I ever needed to, like if the glass broke or something. Time for final installation, the most exciting part of any project. Uh, I drill a big hole in the side of the cabinet. Um, there happens to be a receptacle under my sink where the dishwasher is plugged in, so I can run an extension cord uh, behind the dishwasher and plug it in under the sink. So I get power to my lights and power to the wine cooler. Well, this one presented a lot of challenges, but if you like the results as much as I did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.